Tyler, the creator, is the true definition of a fearless artist. He's someone who has never been afraid to break boundaries, take artistic risks, and sometimes completely shatter expectations from both his haters and fans alike. If there's one thing that no one has ever been able to do, it's keep Tyler in a box. It's a look, it's a fucking look. All right, nigga. From his production or rap flows to his fashion and events, Tyler is a once in a generational creative that has influenced an entire group of kids to grow up and want to be themselves. I just try to tell people to just think for themselves and they'll be way happier in the long run. But Tyler's success wasn't some overnight accident or lucky break. This was years of hard work in the making, studying the greats, taking risks, learning from so-called failure, and working on his craft relentlessly until he finds his next sonic breakthrough. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what Tyler the Creator is like in the studio, straight from the mouths of Odd Future, Lil Wayne, and Tyler himself. Four, 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 four. Tyler's musical process often starts with a chord. Chords, chords, chords. Tyler, chord, like that's all, but that's the sh that I fucking care about more than anything. I listen mm. to music all day. Even going back to the musical world's introduction to Tyler, the first thing we ever heard from him was an eerie piano chord being struck while he delivered a look into his darkest thoughts. This is what the devil plays before he goes to sleep. So fool for thought, this fool for devil. Go ahead and fucking eat. Over time, the tone of voice has evolved and the vibrancy is raised, but that doesn't change the fact that chords have always been the most important part of a song for Tyler. Learning to play the piano was a key moment in his life, no pun intended. When he was 13, he was inspired after watching Pharrell play piano on a DVD. He said this about the life-changing moment. I didn't know how to play the piano till I was about 13 after I seen Pharrell play during the Clones DVD. I'm a big Neptunes fan, like Die Hard. Name a date, I know when it came out. How many tracks, how long they are, but when I seen him play that piano, I was like, that is the coolest shit ever. I was like, I need to learn how to effing play piano. My mom never wanted to give me lessons, so I taught myself to play. Now nah, play, I'll do it again, I'll do it again. Just do that again. Yeah. That's all I did when I was younger was music. I didn't really play outside, wasn't into sports. And I didn't have like a big selection of friends. And I'll just go through CDs and listen to them and make little fake album covers with my name on it. And as time progressed, I just learned more about different music and chord changes and pitch and I just led me to other shit. Tyler's mom ended up buying him that keyboard when he was 14 years old and he taught himself the rest from scratch. I actually ran into Tyler this year backstage at Coachella and when I asked him what his favorite piano chords were, he went into depth describing the sounds that he loves. Even if he doesn't know the chords by name, Tyler's ability to visualize a song is unmatched. A lot of his motivation on the production side came from his love for music and the artists he grew up on. Eventually, Tyler started making his own beats at 12 years old using Reason and then switched to Fruity Loops. Always wanted piano fucking lessons. When I asked for him, was in seventh grade, I was 12, 13, my mom put me in fucking basketball and I felt I hate that shit. I had her buy me a keyboard for fucking Christmas. And I just sat in my room like for a whole summer just getting used to the fucking keys and shit. And I tried to fucking teach myself how to read it. Tyler has never been shy to show love to his musical inspirations on the production side. In fact, you can hear him giving flowers to his instrumental idols pretty much every single chance he gets. I think it was Power 106. I'm not even bullshit because y'all hear it. I it was Easter of 2002, and I heard the song Tape You from In Search Of on the radio. Okay. I was like, what the f is this? this is the greatest song I've ever heard. And then a couple months later, I never found out who it was, and a couple months later, I was at the f laundry mat, sitting in the car, waiting for the car to drive my mom, and running the sun came on, and it was for sure Power 106, and I was like, this is the craziest shit I ever heard. And then I finally found out that those two songs were the you know, by the same band. Right, right, right. And ever since I found out who that was, I've been a fing stand for the Neptunes and Clips and just that. That's whole dope. That's so dope. I thank you guys for playing that. Oh, no off doubt, top. man. That's crazy. No doubt. I do have outside features on the album, but those are people that, like, like I was five years old when I heard Erica Badu's first album. I've been a Pharrell fucking stand since I could fucking remember. I've been in love with Stereo Lab since fucking high school. Like, like, I've worked with people on there that influenced my music. Like, I basically copied from them. So I made sure that, fuck it, if I could fucking possibly get them to work with me and I've been copying their music for years, I'm gonna fucking do it. The only people now is Roy Ayers and Eminem, and I'm good. 
<laughs> when asked what the difference between just making beats and being an actual producer is, here's what Tyler said. Beat making is just making a beat. It could just be the loop. It could just be the base idea. But producing... Are you a producer if you're a beat maker? No. I don't think so. Okay. I think it is a, it's a way to differentiate it. Producing is like really making this four minute three. A hundred percent. Only bringing in vocals here. Bringing in the flute player just here. Actually, we'll turn this down. Really bringing it together. And I try to do that with every song. I love moments. You listen to one of my songs. I love moments. The little doo -doo 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 that only come in once. Or like having that bridge only come for four bars. And people are like, why didn't you loop it? Because of that moment. Uh, at the end, that one sound only come in there. Only having the vocal pads on the second hook. And over the course of his career, he's really done such an incredible job of creating sonic landscapes for the consumer to get lost in. And when you do get lost, you can always call Tyler. Sorry for the bad jokes. Back to the video. Where is he? Baby. Who the fuck is that? No one. It's almost like Tyler has the ability to create a vivid world for you to step into for an hour while you're listening to his projects before you go back to whatever your reality actually is. <laughs> Just check out how much of a zone he's in himself while creating here. Check out what the backdrop of his own physical landscape looks like for this production. It's almost like he implemented that into the actual chords. He's also never been afraid to experiment when it comes to production. In fact, Cherry Bomb was basically Tyler consciously taking risks in front of the world's eyes with how far he could stretch himself sonically to try and reach the heights of his biggest influences. It's like songs that I'm like, damn, I will never make a song better than that. I will never make a song better than Stevie Wonder's uh, Where Were You When I Need You. Mm -hmm. So I always use that like, god dang, I have to make something good like that. And that's what pushes me. And the fact that I, in my own head, I think I will never make something as good as the songs that I love will always, and that's that thing I said, I can into. never grasp mm -hmm. it. So I'll always push myself. That's why I don't know what the word potential means. Because potential, that's a gap. That, I mean, that's a, you stop, that's a wall. I don't know what that means. So I'll always push myself harder. And whether people like it or not, at least for me, I'm trying things and trying to be better, yeah, you know? Man. And clearly he loves what he does. Take a look at how passionate Tyler is about the production here. Two bridges in one song? What are niggas talking to me about? Bro, do you hear that? Do you hear that? Listen, if I'm not booed up, if I'm not booed up on 4th of July at my whatever crib I'm at in upstate New York or whatever the fuck with this plan, I'm gonna, I might kill myself. I might kill myself. But while Tyler's instrumental production may be the most important part of his song structure, the lyrical element to his music should never be overlooked. At his core, Tyler is also a storyteller. He's always admitted that he loves the art of rap and how he's been able to use words to paint a picture so vividly. I'm a rapper, I love it. It's a beautiful thing. We're good with words. We're good with rhythm. We know pockets. We hear a collection of sounds in one thing and say, ah, I know what could go over this. That takes a skill. Hey, we know narrative. Ah, I know what you're feeling. I know how to put those in words where you could understand yourself better. Being a rapper is awesome. Oh, yeah, I had an experience. Let me tell you about it. We're great storytellers. Being a rapper is awesome. But you could be multiple choice. You could be into this, and you could be into this, and you could be into that. It's A, B, C. 
His storytelling started out as a lot of fictional narratives that were almost like movies. Here he is describing the creative writing process around the time of Goblin. Every song is a story to me, you know? That's the shit, that's the shit I think about. You know, everybody thinks about dark shit. Why when somebody finally fucking says it, it's such a big deal, you know? Everybody goes home and it's some shit that eats them up inside that they don't really tell people, but they're just afraid to say this shit. Like, just why, why, when, I, why when somebody finally says shit that someone's thinking it's such a big deal? Much of his early material was dark, but there was always humor in it also. There were always clever bars and metaphors, and it was always clear that Tyler was a lyricist. Even the greats like Lil Wayne recognized his greatness early on. First of all, Tyler changed the game. Maybe I probably had a line that I knew I, w I wouldn't say because people might think it was too gross to put in the rap. Uh, it didn't go with the whole or the vibe of the song, but I think about some man Tyler say this shit. Also, he really be spitting though. If niggas not listening to him and only hearing him, they need to do the other. They need to listen. Because yeah, you know, hearing and listening is two different things. And that's coming from Wayne, who has, keep in mind, said some pretty outrageous things in his bars. But it seems like early on, Tyler didn't really care what anyone thought of his lyrics. He was just creating in order to get the thoughts out of his head into the world. Here's what he said about his early writing process. I make those songs for me. I lay down in bed before I go to sleep and think about shit that eats me up. I don't trust anybody. Even my close, close, close best friends who I would take a bullet for, there's things I don't talk to them about. So I have to make those songs just to get shit out, just to say it, because I don't tell anyone that shit, so I make those songs for myself. That people like them and relate to them, it's pretty cool. But over time, his ability to express himself through words has shifted. With each album came a new intention and a newfound version of himself as an artist. For Igor, Tyler said that the album was more of an expression of his feelings rather than trying to overthink the lyrics. Igor was definitely like all feeling. Woke up in the morning, this is how I felt, made that song, did that for like two weeks. And then I was like, oh, shit, I have something. It was like six songs, six, seven songs. I was like, oh my gosh, this is... And that's kind of why it goes into this weird chronological order because yeah. that was how I felt that morning. It was like over a span of like two weeks almost. And then when I, every time I make an album, I put in a playlist on my phone yeah. just to see how it flows and stuff. And uh, I was like, oh, sh this, this, uh, this flows. Tyler takes his storytelling much more seriously than most artists, even creating a whole character that he plays the role of on each of his albums. He said that when writing Flower Boy, he took a step back from those characters and was actually being himself. I like to dress, it's fun. Yeah. Goblin is a ski mask. Wolf was the camp sh Then yeah. Cherry Bomb, I had the, the pink face thing. And yeah. like, I always love that. All my videos, I'm in, I'm bald one scene. Like, I don't know, that's really fun. It was also while working on that album that Tyler discovered the power of melody and song structure. He always had a love of production, chords, and great music, but Tyler said that he took a long look at his catalog and claimed to have only had three good songs in terms of structure at that point. And while many people might disagree, it did change the way that Tyler made music. This made him go back into the musical crates and look at what truly made a hit song in the first place. From there, he was able to create some of the biggest hits of his career. This is on the radio right now. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so happy. Oh my God. I said, okay, 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 Flower Boy saw Tyler experimenting more with glossy hooks, background vocals, features, and even singing himself, but this process didn't come easily. While Tyler's rap voice is one of the most unique of all time, he actually felt like it was holding him back from making great songs. Honestly, I think I ruined songs. <laughs> I hate my voice. I think I'm a fucking ridiculously talented producer and have really, really, really good ideas. That's all kinds of messed up though because um, you are widely regarded as having one of the best tones and the best, most recognizable voices in modern music. Yeah, that's cute and shit, but when you want to write singy songs like Stevie Wonder, yeah. 
and you can't because your voice is holding you back and you sound mm. like a monster all the fucking time. <laughs> And because of that, people only want to hear you rap. Yeah. But it's like, I'm not even that good at that, but I'm ridiculously good at that. You start hating it more. Mm. And I know my voice is sick as f but it's like, all right, like I've rapped. Let me let me show y'all what else I could do. Like I could hit free throws, but I could also like do cool dribbles. Yeah, yeah. So because of that, sense. I decided on Flower Boy to just try to shut the f up and only speak when I need to speak. Mm. So. That's why Rex is on boredom mm. and I don't come in until a, a minute and 20 seconds. Mm, mm. You know, because I was like, okay, this is this is how it should be. But that's what I'm, I think I'm good at. Serving it's the purpose of the best result. Yeah, yeah. Like, and all right, I did my verse. I said it here. When I come in, it's on topic. Concept's good. Make sure the flow's not jumbled. Then and there. And it took me years to figure that out. And while he might have allowed room for more features, when Tyler works with other artists in the studio, he is an executive producer. Here he is giving vocal cues for Charlie Wilson. Knocking at my door, knocking at my door. Let's go back. Knocking at my door. He's a legend, and him taking cues from me was so weird. Man, I'm so paranoid. Okay, okay, it's a long one. Okay, go. Do it again. Yeah, and I'm like so paranoid. Hey, that's what you want. That's what you want. When I'm so, when I'm so paranoid. Alright, let's do that one. Oh, yeah. I, I just, just might be in the. Oh, I'm saying, walk it fast. Walk it, do it again. I just might be in the. Here we go. I just might be in the. Oh, I think that one. I did. know yeah. that you too young. Mike. I know look at this. that you this right here, are the one. Charlie Wilson just sang on this. Check this out. I know that of you too young. <laughs> Igor was Tyler taking the insecurities about his vocal abilities and facing that fear head on. He sang on the majority of the album, and rather than using features to take the lead vocal role, Tyler played with pitch and inflection to create some of his most beautiful songs to date. And even when he did use features, it was done in such a unique way, like with Earthquake, the combination of Playboy Cardi's iconic verse and some background vocals from Uncle Charlie Wilson. <laughs> Smash. Most recently, it seems like Tyler caught the itch to really put rap at the forefront of his craft again with the Call Me If You Get Lost era. Tyler called on DJ Drama, one of his early inspirations, to bring a resurgence to the Gangsta Girls series. I grew up on DJ Drama mixtapes. I mean, what he did with Wayne is very instrumental to how me and our future even made music. We didn't have hooks on a lot of our songs. So just that structure, that just freedom of just going in, going in, no hook, just saying lines, just rapping. One minute songs, a verse here, really came from that era. That was a yeah. sick of song. And on the project, rather than visualizing new worlds like he did with his early work in Goblin, lyrically, Tyler raps about the things in his life that he likes. The things that influence his art are the things that exist around him. I wanted to make braggadocious rap music that was about the shit that I was into. Not so much of the rap music that I listened to specifically talks about the, the things that I like. So I made sure to make that shit that talks about the shit I like. No, it's a look, it's a fucking look. All right, nigga. Whether it's the specific cars, the specific foods. I love this shit. <laughs> the specific places that I like to vacation or go to or hang out at. Uh, I did this for me to listen to super loud in my cars. And we can't talk about Tyler the Creator's musical process and not mention the visual aspect to it. Tyler has always been a creative genius when it comes to his music videos, but when comparing the process of making his songs to the videos, I don't think one can exist without the other. Here he is talking about the correlation all the way back in 2011. He said, I can't choose anymore. When people ask whether I like making the video to a song or making a song to the video that's in my head, I don't know. I can't choose between either one because they go hand in hand. They need each other. Okay, okay, my infatuation and translate into another form of what you call it. 
For Tyler though, each album has a visual and conceptual counterpart to the music. Whether it be the bright colors of orange and yellow that go along with Flower Boy, or the light blue and pink pastel tones that accompany Call Me If You Get Lost, his entire catalog has a visual aspect to it. In terms of collaborating in the studio, for the most part, Tyler has always liked to work with his friends. The entire Odd Future movement was partially so big because it was just a group of people who all got along and joined forces in their creative endeavors together. Sometimes he has people around him simply there for the vibes and wherever they do fit into the project, then they'll go on to it. I just wanted to leave. I went to Lake Como. Why Italy? Why Como? Solange, I've been there. It's Frank amazing. Came. But... It was awesome. Yeah. Frank was like, where you at? I was like, yeah, I'm at the house. He was like, I'm gonna pull up. Pulled up on the boat. Solange, where you at? She pulled up on the boat. Like, it was a move. It was sick though. But over time, Tyler has branched out with his collaborations. Of course, him and ASAP always have fun in the studio together. I'm riding Mary, you caught. I think I might pick browser. I need motherfucking housing. I need shit is off the yows above. Tell that bitch to come through fucking nigga, man. Hell with club. I'm T came through with the new whip. I ain't even got a new bitch. I want my old one. Got a nigga named Cootie, got an old gun. If you want some, but you don't want that. Nigga got the green hat, cause it messed the pockets. Get it, cats, cats, dogs, frogs, and all. Fuck that nigga got a problem, nigga gotta solve him, nigga know his mama, know where his family lives. When you're not afraid to be yourself, you're comfortable. Um, it's like a web or an umbrella. When you're when you're not afraid to be you, you're comfortable. When you're comfortable with yourself, you don't have that much hate in your heart and you're not that quick to judge. And when you're not that quick to judge, you're open to more things. When you're open to more things, you're not ignorant. And when you're not ignorant, racism doesn't exist. But Tyler doesn't just have features on his album for the sake of it. He always makes sure to utilize someone for the ultimate good of the song. Here's Kaliucci talking about how Tyler always pushed her to be the best version of herself that she could be creatively. Oh, my name's Kaliucci. Usually he already has something ready and he'll already have an idea. Most of the time he writes everything or he'll have a melody idea. Obviously he produces everything, so he really hones in on making sure the whole thing is exactly how he wants it to be. Because when I met him, I had just started singing. I feel like I was still really learning about my voice. He definitely made me a lot more comfortable and experiment more with like my range. I think what I admire most about Tyler, how dedicated he is, how much he really wants to make something meaningful that's gonna be lasting rather than make something that, you know, will get to radio or will be something that people listen to right now and then maybe goes away later. I don't think he's ever really cared about trends or um, he just kind of follows what he wants to do and um, he works really hard. And here's Lil Wayne talking about working with Tyler. And he texts me and just like, man, I got this joint. He's like a perfectionist. So he's one of those guys that you know you he want he know exactly what he wants from you. He might fuck around and write your verse for you. Tyler even brought out the best of Kanye. Listen to how Ye reacted when he heard Wayne and Tyler's verses on Smuckers. Went to Ye House, played it for him. He was like, cool. Wayne sent me his shit the day after I played it. We, I went back the day after Wayne sent it and played it for Ye again. And he heard me and Ye, me and Wayne verse, and he was like, ripped his paper out of his notebook, bought it up, and started a new. And it was ideas on there. And he was like, y'all niggas really about to make me rap and go in. Like, I ain't had niggas making me want to do that in so long. That's personally one of my favorite Tyler rap songs and even some of my favorite Wayne and Kanye bars in recent memory, but let me know yours of all three in the comments below. Tyler was even able to bring the best out of his idol Pharrell in the studio. That last bar cadence is, you should roll with that. Like, which one? The, uh, the, yeah, I'm nerdy, yeah, I'm nerdy, yeah, I'm nerdy. Like on that last part, it's like, yeah, I'm nerdy, yeah, I'm nerdy. It's like you calm, but you slurring the words. The, the first half of your verse could it be more like that, but the same the same lyrics. The end part of his verse where he's like, yeah, I'm nerdy, yeah, I'm swerving, yeah, you heard me. Of course, there are the obvious influences like Jaden Smith or Steve Lacey, but Tyler's musical influence runs much deeper than people would like to give credit for sometimes. Here's Juice World talking about his respect for Tyler. WGKTA was my childhood from like 11 to 11. No, nah, damn near like, 10 to high school, I think. So you're one school. of those kids who like Odd Future was just what burst your fucking mind open. And I was already skating. So when I came, when they came out with some rappers that could actually skate, mm. that were raw as hell and that were different, that shit, that shit like, it fucked my head up. 
And here's Jack Harlow saying he was starstruck by him. Drama, DJ Drama, who I'm signed to, called me on FaceTime when he was in LA. We were just chopping it up real casual, and then suddenly out of nowhere, he passes the phone to Tyler, the creator. And it was a hell of a moment. I was, he caught me. I was tongue tied. I was like, because I love Tyler. I grew up watching him, like, just what he is culturally, so. It was, it was wild. And to bring things full circle, even his biggest inspiration, Pharrell, had this to say about Tyler inspiring him. The stories you used to tell me about listening to our albums and then to get to see you have a show and we're out there performing and it's your show. Like that's, that's Thank you. that means more to me than it does to you. Cause I would have died to have that with Q-Tip. Died, you know what I'm saying? But we never did that. And you're a different generation and uh, I, just, I just love that this generation has its anchor. That's our future. So I'm not worried about, we got a lot of help now. It's not just us, like it's, it's us. It's our future, it's Kendrick. You know, it's a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of great minds that give a fuck about like where things end up and how they go. And as long as you keep, you stay where you are and you stay loyal to your beliefs, and secondly, um, your curiosity, no one can touch you. Tyler, the creator, is a true creative genius. He is an inspiration to so many, including myself, and his art continues to push the boundaries of music. If Tyler decides to no longer make music one day, then it's okay because I know whatever he makes next will be his best creation to date, always. But I also think that he has a lot more ideas that he wants to put into the world that will involve music. So Tyler, if you're watching this, thank you for the art and thank you for being yourself. This has been another episode of our DX Deep Dive Studio Series. Let us know in the comments what is the one studio session that you would have wanted to be in the booth for and let us know who we should cover next. As always for Hip Hop DX, I'm Jeremy Hecht. It's been a pleasure making this video and I hope you get one step closer towards your dreams today. And if nobody else has told you yet today, I love you. I'll leave you guys with this clip. See, I'm thinking 15 years from now. Mm -hmm. I'm playing the long game. What opportunity? And I need people to know that, oh, this is, I, this is the full idea. This yeah. isn't just me rapping over some random, like this was the full idea. Everything yeah. is very particular. Yeah.